Welcome to Impact the World, a podcast from West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is where we discuss topics related to how we can all love God, love people, and impact the world. Here's your host, Tara Hayes. I am your host, Tara Hayes, and today I have a full studio. (laughs) I'm finally getting to sit down with some people that I admire a lot and talk about a great ministry here um, at West Park that we are partnered with called Cedar Brook Outreach. And if you don't know anything about Cedar Brook Outreach, today is the day you will learn all of the things and you will get to hear from Jack Underwood. Hey, Jack. Hey, Tara. I'm so glad that I'm finally getting to sit down with you on this Thanks for letting us be a part of it. Well, we're excited. And a lot of you already know this person, Lisa Newsom. Hey, Lisa. Hello. It's good to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be here. And then there's another person that most of you might know, Pastor Sam Polson. Hello, and I'm sorry (laughs) for this voice that... uh, it's bothered many people, and they're no. going to have to listen through this again. No, so. not at all. You're hopefully, funny. Hopefully not catch up on their sleep. No, no, not at all. There's No, there's too much good information for anybody to that sleep through true. this. That is true. That's true. So Cedarbrook is an exciting ministry, mm-hmm. and there is a lot happening. So um, I think this is going to be a great way for people to learn more about Cedarbrook. Yeah, I think so, too. So We're excited. Yeah. So for the benefit of those who might not know about Cedar Brook, let's talk a little bit about the origin or the beginning of Cedar Brook Outreach. Sure. That, that's a great story. I, I love telling it, so I'll try just to hit the highlights. <laughs> uh, you know, most things having to do with outreach, I know a lot of us around this table, uh, we learn from missionaries. And though we have been a missionary Sydney church, uh, we've learned a lot about mission from our missionaries. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, many years ago, you know, in serving on the board of ABWE, just hearing missionaries as they'd go to other countries talk about how they made an impact in their community. Mm-hmm. And uh, they would go there. They would learn the culture, the language. They'd find out who are the people there. How do you build bridges of relationships? And uh, one day it just kind of dawned on me, uh, I don't know if we've ever done that in our community. But then I thought, well, we know our community so well. We know uh, we've been here so long. So actually about 11 or 12 years ago, we uh, came up with the idea to try to just see who lives here in this community around us and make sure we know. So we had a team organized that I call the Jerusalem team Mm -hmm. that went out and started talking to stakeholders in the community, uh, community leaders, education leaders, government, uh, people in various social services. And what we found out about our community that we did not know (laughs) was absolutely amazing. Uh, The um, incredible needs in this community, Uh, the number, the amount of brokenness in Mm. homes, Uh, the incredible number of people from other countries who live within a few miles of West Park. And so as a result of that, uh, we just brought the information to the church family. We had a night we called the Night of Dreams. I remember that night. Right. And where people, on the basis of the information that the Jerusalem team shared, how could we we reach out with the love of Christ to our community? Uh, We actually had big boards up across the front with the post-it notes, and we had over 800 ideas turned in. And uh, we had a team that took those 800 ideas, got them down to a more manageable number, and then we had the Night of Dreams, a sequel. (laughs) And uh, everybody could vote for their top five. Uh, And then from that information from the church family about their interest in various areas, we were able to start organizing some ministry in various areas. We called it Envision, which was an envision how we could impact our community. And so needs like uh, at-risk families, biblical counseling, uh, international friends, uh, ministries of mercy, uh, and then uh, one that we, uh, we just called Uh, missional campus. How can we use this campus the most missionally? Those became the areas of ministry. And so it started out as Envision, 
and God blessed the vision. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everything that we thought was, uh, was accomplished, but amazing things. And uh, from that, uh, the ministries and leadership came together that over a period of time, uh, we had the basis, we felt, for starting a ministry that would reach out to this community around us in a, in a more effective way, not just with West Park, but with other churches. Right. And that became a part of the vision that this this is too big for West Park, because if you go five minutes from our site, you have about 40,000 people. Yeah, that's... That's Way a, too many. A large vision. Right. Mm-hmm. So the idea and the vision was maybe we can get other churches to partner with us in this. And so uh, that was how it got started, uh, Tara. Well, uh, really started with hearing how missionaries uh, reach out to their communities and how we maybe could do that here. So Yeah, that, that um, really launched this initiative into this whole ministry. Um, so how did we arrive at the name Cedar Brook Outreach? I know some people are okay. like, that sounds like something I kind of yeah. know. I, I'd like to say specifically how it happened. It might have been after a couple cups of coffee. Okay, <laughs> I mean. Uh, Very leaded we, coffee. We, because one of the issues was trying to identify, how do we identify this community and we don't have here at our site, you know, like a, a school that's right here or something that kind of identifies right. us. And so um, as I was thinking about it one time, I just said, well, what's the main roads around here? And I, well, there's Middlebrook Pike where our church sits. And then there's Cedar Bluff. So I started thinking about that and came up with the idea of calling the community Cedar Brook. And just in this general area. Yeah. So uh, from that came the idea, Lord, help us to do outreach into our Jerusalem, our Cedar Brook. Yeah. And that's how it got started. And I'm grateful it stuck. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a great name. And it, I think it does kind of help identify where we are yes. and kind of our area of influence. Yes. It's, it's general enough that it allows people to... No, it's kind of a little bit of a regional thing, yeah. but it's specific enough to kind of separate it from other parts of even West Knox County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll talk a little bit further into this episode about kind of our area of influence through Cedar Brook and kind of some things that are going on. But so yeah. you've been a part of Cedar Brook from the, its inception. Yes. So <laughs> currently, what is your role with Cedar Brook? Okay. Well, I. <laughs> Generally, you know, clean up after Jack most of the time. Mm. (laughs) That's a full-time job. Well, you know. I have help now, though, so. (laughs) That is true. Part of that story is I'm a chairman of the board of uh, Cedar Brook Outreach, and we do have a board of directors Mm -hmm. because uh, a few years ago the Lord allowed us to uh, apply for and uh, receive a 501c3, a nonprofit, which allows the ministry to connect with a, a, a greater kingdom impact, to have uh, various people that can work with us, uh, gives us entrance into some places maybe we could not yeah. go, also opens up some uh, streams of revenue for partnership that might not be open. And so we were able to start uh, Cedar Brook Outreach, uh, Inc., which <laughs> is a nonprofit, and uh, established a board, and, and I serve as chairman of the board. So that's what I do. I'm not in the day-to-day operations. We're grateful for a great board that we yeah. have. All are, all are involved in helping, but uh, day-to-day, it's uh, in particular these two here <laughs> and some other wonderful folks and yeah. an incredible number of volunteers that yeah. make it happen. Yeah, yeah. sure. That's exciting. Well, so Jack, um, why don't you share a little bit about your role and what your the mission of Cedar Brook is? Mm-hmm. Well, I have the privilege to serve as the executive director of Cedar Brook, and uh, like Pastor Sam said, I work with uh, an amazing board, work under their authority, but then uh, work with a great team of folks that uh, some of our core people that work in our office, some work on our team but don't necessarily coming in, in and out of our office, and then uh, the bulk of our horsepower really comes from volunteers. Mm-hmm. We've just got hundreds of volunteers who uh, step up in different ways to help the ministry move forward. 
As far as the mission goes, we rewrote the mission statement, uh, revised the mission statement last year, or at the beginning of this year, with our board. And the new uh, mission statement reads, we exist to serve at-risk children and families in the name of Jesus Christ through compassionate mobilization and transformation. And just to clarify what we mean by mobilization and transformation, by mobilization, as Pastor Sam said, um, our, our, our vision really is to partner with local churches. We recognize we're not a local church. We are uh, a ministry, a Christian ministry, but we're not a local church. And we uh, Christ ordained the local church to do His ministry, and so we want to partner with uh, local uh, evangelical local churches and uh, do the work of ministry. So we see ourselves as partners with local churches, the individuals within those local churches, and also community-minded uh, foundations that uh, partner with us and uh, give generously to help the ministry move forward. That's the mobilization component. The transformation part is... Uh, we believe that God changes people from the inside out, one soul mm-hmm. at a time. Mm-hmm. And our goal is to proclaim the gospel and do it effectively enough so that one by one, uh, the different communities where we serve are transformed mm-hmm. person by person uh, until it uh, spreads throughout the whole community. So uh, that's our mission statement. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. I know that, you, like you've said, you partner... H- how many different churches do you partner with now? Oh, boy. Um Probably, I should have uh, written that down, probably six or so I was say, uh, churches that we partner now. with. now. I know that has continued to grow over the years. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have, we have volunteers from a number of more than just that. Just but, the partner but, churches, but people yeah. people who have kind of uh, churches that have officially joined in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Six or seven. Now. Yeah, there's, it's, it's, uh, thank, we're thankful for the uh, pastors who are visionaries in yeah. those churches and um, the leadership teams in those churches that partner with us the staff um, that comes alongside, and we work um, left hand, right hand, try and work together uh, in in whatever particular area we're serving in. So um, we're, we're privileged uh, to continue that original vision that West Park had of not it not being a West Park ministry, right. but being a global ministry, a community ministry, yeah. a kingdom ministry. And so other churches and leadership have uh, uh, come alongside us, and uh, they're they're a huge uh, blessing to us. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the most exciting things about Cedar Brook, right. because the amount of reach <laughs> that you can obtain when you have multiple churches, mm-hmm. it, and I think from the beginning, God gave Pastor Sam that vision that West Park can't, we can't reach 40, 60, 80,000 people by ourselves. Right, right. Um, so, you know, what is God doing to, you know, how can God bring all of these churches together to reach out into our community? Right. I think it's exciting. And, and we're united on the gospel. Yeah. You know, there are non-essential issues. We may not dot the I and right. cross the T the same place. However, when it comes to a belief in Jesus Christ as the, the way of salvation through faith in Him alone, that's where all these churches have gotten on board with this. And, yeah. and uh, that's... Well, as Jack said, the Lord always works from the inside right. out. And so it's even not, it's not that quote unquote churches do it corporately. It's really the body, the people yeah. in those churches. Yeah. It's individual. Yeah. It's always relationship. It's yeah. always about that. So when we talk about churches, I just want everybody to know, yes, we're grateful for these partner churches, but it's the churches really exist in those people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what's a beautiful thing when you see them serving together and you maybe don't even know what church that person <laughs> right. goes to. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we're that's here. not what it's about. No. It's about reaching no, people no, with the gospel. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and the, the other beautiful thing about that is then once you do reach someone for the Lord, you have a place to plug them in. Mm-hmm. And because exactly. that's key as well, you then they need to grow in their in their faith, and they have a place to do that. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. exciting. That's what Jack and Jack said. You know, the Lord ordained the local church. Yeah, and ministries like uh, Cedarbrook that are launched out of churches, uh, it's still the local body, the churches, where those you know one and others are accomplished. That's. That's how the kingdom goes forward. Yeah. You know, it's it's in those local bodies, and so I'm grateful. You know, Jack and uh, the rest, you know, the board and people involved. That's that's true north. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Lisa, you are very <laughs> familiar with the local church. Yes, <laughs> and I how am. it works. Yes, but you've recently transitioned. 
yes. to working um, through Cedar Brook. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what is your new role? I have lots of, I'm, I'm going to Gatlin gun you some questions. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. But well, I know she, your role. She's shy. No, yes, okay, so. it's, I know. We're going to have to <laughs> Pull it help out her me. out of her exactly. shell. Exactly. But your, um, tell us a little bit about your role with Cedar Brook, or sure. a lot about your role, sure. but also talk about your um, your experience at West Park and how yeah. you think that that um, readied you for what you're doing now. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, first off, I'm super excited to be um, at Cedar Brook, and um, God is doing some amazing things um, in and through God's people, you know, in mm-hmm. our community. But, um, but as most of the people that are listening know, um, you know, I've been at West Park for many years. And um, over the past few years, I've been serving um, in kids ministry and um, pretty much all of my adult um, ministry has been missions and kids. Yep. Um, and while I love kids, still love kids and enjoyed my time there with uh, with them and, and with parents and our volunteers, and I had a great team. Um, I did really find myself um, in a season of burnout, Mm -hmm. and that was really hard for me, hard for me as a mature believer to to feel that, to admit that, to um, get help for that, to to slow down, because, you know, because if you do know me... There are two speeds. There's two speeds. Exactly. Road runner and asleep. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And so so I just really... um, you know, wanted, wanted to take some time to pray and, and pastor, I thank you when I came to pastor and, and really we, we got down to the nitty gritty of Mm -hmm. what was really going on with me and it was burnout. You know, you were so gracious to allow me to take a few months to pray, to rest, to seek counsel, Mm -hmm. um, and just take that time to determine what is the next step for me. Um, and so I felt very, um, loved and cared for, Mm -hmm. um, in that transition. And so I know a lot of you all were praying for me too. Um, so I want to thank you again for Mm -hmm. that. Um, Mm -hmm. so I so appreciate, um, you, you walking that out Uh, with me. Um, but God has always, um, since my early adulthood given me a heart for missions and outreach and, um, I've had the privilege of working um, and serving in local and global missions mm. um, really throughout my career here at West Park. But even before I came to West Park um, in 2001, so 2001, wow. I came here. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a long time. Um, but again, youth group. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we'll say. Elementary anyway. school. Exactly. Yeah, that's what we'll say. <laughs> but um, but really, um, in all seriousness, not that I'm old old, but I am aging. I'm getting older. My kids are grown. And as I have um, was doing that, I just feel like that this is a season for me to um, pour into not only uh, people in the local community that I'm hoping to meet women and moms, but even here at West Park, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, yeah. I've raised my kids. I've got, mm-hmm. you know, years of, of walking got with the Lord. Experience. Yeah, <laughs> I've got some experience. And so I feel like that women and young moms are or just kind of where God has got um, got my heart. And so for me to be able to um, have the opportunity to do that in our local community um, where, as you said, Pastor, there's so many that are broken mm-hmm. and there's so many that need Jesus first and foremost, but just helping them to um, not only be discipled and cared for and loved, but but given life skills and right. parenting yeah. skills and, and how to guidance. think and guidance. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so um, it also didn't hurt that, um, you know, Jack is um, <laughs> my first boss when I came to <laughs> West Park. And we're coming we, full circle. We're coming here. full circle. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And, um, you know, when he left, he remembers I bald and was like, no, you cannot leave us hard. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but God had, had plans for him, but for, but to come back around and be under his leadership again. And, um, you know, we were just a great team the mm-hmm. first time around and I, I knew we'd be a great team, um, you know, the second yeah. time around. So, um, you know, it, it is, like I said, just I want to reiterate coming back because I've served with, with Cedar Brook, mm-hmm. um, even oh. since it's, I mean, you and I talked oh. about Right. It's conception. Yes. You were running I, I ideas absolutely. through, right. you know, we were talking about those things. But going out now, um, even compared to just a few years ago, I mean, Cedarbrook has made a tremendous um, breakthrough and they're making progress right. and I'm yeah. seeing change. Mm-hmm. And yeah. 
um, and they know us now. Yeah. Becoming known. Really. Yeah. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. what year exactly, just for people who don't know, did Cedar Brook start? Because that takes a time to build that reputation yeah. and yeah. to break Was into the community. Yeah, we, uh, well, we cast the vision for Cedar Brook actually in 2017, 18. And it was actually Jehovah Jireh, uh, yeah. Sunday, mm-hmm. uh, 2017, I believe, if my memory so. uh, serves us right, that we asked the people if they just like, hey, yeah. give to this vision. And uh, West Park just, you know, gave amazing, mm-hmm. you know, generosity. So actually began, I think, as a full-fledged ministry under Cedarbrook in March of 2018. Yeah, so, so I think a little we're over five years. Yeah, we're approaching this March will be six years yeah. or so. Yeah, so and that uh, seems I, I think that seems about right. Yeah. It takes yeah. a while to build that the community within mm-hmm. churches and for people to understand outside what Cedar Brook is and their right what yeah. they're doing. And yeah. it's it's been a it's been a process too of just seeing you know okay um, it, you know I always think about the Book of Acts you know. <laughs> Paul tried to go this way and the door didn't open. They tried to go this way and it didn't open. And then he has the vision. It's wide open. Yeah. And so some of the things that we thought uh, that direction, that wasn't it. And then things we have no thought about yeah. just opened up. And it's just been amazing to see the Lord go before and many times have just that person you need, mm-hmm. you know, that's even in that community, right. a, a mm. people of goodwill yeah. that are saying, hey, we want you. We're, it's, yeah. That's been really a great thing. Yeah. So it's exciting You're what you get to be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, full circle, you know, I, I just so everybody knows, Jack and I, you know, we've been friends 30-plus years. Mm-hmm. So Jack was pastoring up in, in Greenville, Tennessee, and we got to know each other through – uh, East Tennessee youth ministries, and <laughs> and we would meet for lunch and commiserate and and, and, <laughs> and encourage each other and became great friends. And then he very graciously accepted an invitation to come join the staff here at uh, uh, West Park, became our uh, our missions pastor, and uh, Lisa was uh, his <laughs> assistant. And uh, so these two right here, I mean, what they know about missions, right. and then also just involvement in kids ministry uh, is incredible. Um, so it's just I I just see the hand of the Lord yeah. all through this. Uh, so, and you have other people that are serving here. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe just give a shout out to some that are on your staff there right now. That are sure, um, Allison Thompson is yeah. a vital member of mm-hmm. our team. Uh, she does an amazing job. She helps lead our mentoring ministry and mm-hmm. and uh, just helps with uh, event planning and just she's she's an organizational whiz just like Lisa is, mm. and then uh, recently, um, Kendra Lawrence joined our team as an administrative assistant. We're excited about that because it, Kendra has a such a great track record here at West Park mm-hmm. uh, for her integrity and her, oh, her yeah. work ethic, and then. Uh, uh, Sherry Stidham and Lynette Prince lead our After Stars ministry, and they do That's an amazing great, job there for helping uh, special needs students. Um, Eric Fogel, Carl Snyder, uh, Kirby Wilcher, uh, Kenny Thomas, and a group of other uh, men and women uh, lead our furniture ministry as volunteers, mm-hmm. and they do just an amazing job. Uh, just last year, they well, this year, they will have delivered over uh, fam- uh Furniture, free furniture to over 200 families this wow. year. And so they just yeah. get a lot done. So, yeah, it's 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 a wonderful team to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's not all about numbers, but even no. being on the board sometimes, I hear some of the numbers, I'm like going, okay, Jack, say that number again, because <laughs> I think just through the, uh, you know, the food truck ministry, uh, how many meals approximately this mm-hmm. year will that be? We should uh, this year probably... Hit about twenty three thousand wow. uh, meals for about twenty three thousand people 20, from the food pantry. I mean, that's. I mean, I think of you know how you know that ministry kind of started out of a little closet, you know, yes. just oh, yeah. giving out a little food, you know, and uh, wow. So I wow. was that was one number that came up, and there are and, many just like that. And we couldn't do that without Robin. Uh, 
she, she's just amazing. Um, she leads Compassion Ministries out in Farragut, mm-hmm. and uh, Robin Rowland leads that. And she's, um, she's just uh, like the ever-ready bunny filled <laughs> with the Holy Spirit because she just really <laughs> right. goes after it. She uh, helps work with us to provide uh, groceries and just all kinds of nice items for us to be able to distribute to families in need mm-hmm. and children. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, shout out to Robin because she and her team are also amazing, and they we're just one of the ministries that they help. Uh, wow. Just last week, they distributed uh, food to over 600 families in um, Teleco Plains High School last Saturday. So, I mean, wow. they're just amazing people, too. That's awesome. Well, I know, so we've talked a little bit about, you know, your transition, Lisa, yep. and um, kind of what prepared you for that. So talk a little bit about your kind of your role and what that looks like on the daily basis or because I know that's it's kind of a you're building it right right <laughs> yes so, um yeah I just started um in September and you know just started running um, that's kind of my personality I think mm-hmm. they probably like whoo what have we what have we got <laughs> it going on over here but but really um when Pastor Sam came to me um at first and was talking to me about this position um I was a little bit stunned. I was a little, I was very much humbled. Um, I was excited, again humbled. Um, but my one of my responsibilities will be um, moving to the other side of missions than what I've normally been doing. I've yeah. normally been on the side of um, caring and training and equipping missionaries as best I can and. Mm-hmm. Um, now you are and, one. And now I'm going to be one. Yeah. So that's... You're not um, sending people far away. You're yeah. staying here. I'm and staying working here. Working as... Yes. Um, so I will be um, the West Park Missionary to Cedarbrook. That's um, exciting. It, it is very exciting. And again, humbled and um, just trying to put that hat on because um, that's a that one is a familiar or yeah. a not familiar hat um, but I will be doing that but I, my title is the development coordinator and so some of the things that um, I'll be doing um, which I'm super super excited about is um, being kind of that liaison between Cedarbrook and West Park and recruiting and training um, volunteers um, and connecting them two ministries that we have going on um, in the community. And I hope to be able to do that also with partner churches, you yeah. know, to be able to go in, um, speak to, to churches, recruit people out. Um, I don't know why God's given me a small gift of recruiting, but <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. It's not, yeah. I wouldn't call it small. So <laughs> I've no. seen Lisa recruit. No, she, no, <laughs> no. I mean, not small. Like, Let's just even, call it a don't gift even for recruiting. Look at her or you'll yeah. find yourself <laughs> right? doing something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, there's something yeah. about Lisa. People can't tell you no. Yeah. That, I, I, Use I, your I, powers I, for good, Lisa. Yes. I, okay. I will, yeah, I'm hoping I won't see people in the hallway and they put their hand up and be like, please don't look at don't me. Don't make eye contact. Exactly. Yeah. Don't make eye contact. No. But you're going to want to 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 see what what's happening and yeah. what God's doing and, and be a part of it. So I'm super excited, um, you know, to be able to do that. Um, but also um, I'll be uh, working with fundraiser events, big events that we'll be having, um, developing new ways um, for us to engage um, our community mm. right now. Um, you know, we talk about a funnel and that food pantry is kind of that first touch where we get to, to know people and, and start making relationships. But we we want to go deeper. You know, we yeah. want to um, get to know folks on a personal level so that we can start discipleship relationships um, with them. And yeah. so that's uh, just like Jack said, I mean, we want to see transformation, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. because things won't change without uh, the change that only Jesus Christ can bring. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, you know, we see a lot of needs in the community and we're able to thank the Lord, provide um, through so many ways and uh, those needs. But what we do see is the greatest need is Jesus. And yeah. we want to be a part of, of bringing him um, to our community. So th- I think that's um, some of the things that I hope to be able to be a part of um, and and helping our West Park, far, ugh, West Park folks to see <laughs> um, areas that they can get connected in yeah. um, because there's 
there's a place for everyone. I mean, we need men, women. We need people working with men and women, children. Uh, we need behind the scenes. We, we need all kinds yeah. of things um, that we can put people's gifts and talents um, to. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's awesome. I think that probably is a good segue into um, ministry opportunities that are available at Cedar Brook and kind of that kind of dovetails with your vision and dream of Cedar Brook. What, what are ways um, right now or some different ministry opportunities that are available in Cedar Brook? Um, well, we, it, it's good to break down the, the basic uh, uh, pillars of Cedar Brook. Um, we have a furniture ministry that delivers um, furniture, like I said, to uh, uh, many, many families across uh, West Knox County. And um, we're always in need of people to help uh, pick up the furniture that's being donated, prep it in our warehouse, and uh, also help deliver that furniture on the weekends. Another need we have for the furniture ministry, honestly, is uh, we're probably going to might be in need of some warehouse space. Mm-hmm. Um, our Warehouse situation may be changing. We're not sure about it right now, but it may be changing in the next month or two. And so, um, we may be in the in the hunt for some new uh, warehouse space. And right now, we utilize a six thousand square foot warehouse to store wow. our furniture, and um, it's it's uh, those are hard to find. Yeah. Uh, that much space is hard to find. Uh, we also have our Stars Ministry. The Stars Ministry is a ministry uniquely K, uh, uh, designed to minister to special needs uh, students and their families, and so. Uh, every afternoon, uh, certain students are dropped off at our uh, classrooms, and they receive uh, love and attention until their parents get off work in the evening, uh, where they can uh, take them back home. And then also, in the summertime, we have a summer camp, summer day camp, for those same students we call the Summer Stars Ministry. They're and just the sweetest. They are. <laughs> they are. And then um, for the Stars Ministry, a person could volunteer. If a person just volunteered 30 minutes a week in the Stars Ministry, uh, just coming in there and visiting with the students and encouraging them and just uh, uh, seeing them and spending time with them, uh, it would make a huge difference in their lives. And then um, in addition to the STARS ministry, we have the our newest ministry really is our mentoring ministry. Mm. Um, we started with one student a couple of years ago. It's now um, we have group mentoring in partnership with Amachi Ministries, and uh, that's about uh, with um, elementary, middle school, and high school kids. It's about uh, 14 students in that right now that are being mentored as a group uh, every Tuesday afternoon. Actually, as we're recording this, they're oh, they're wow. being mentored right That's now exciting. over at Nature's Cove. And then we also have about three students right now that are in one-to-one adult relationships with uh, adults that we have screened and uh, who love the Lord and are willing to invest in those students mm. to try and just help them get a different worldview and, yeah. and, and experience a preferred future. That's awesome. Then the community ministry, that's probably our, our loudest and biggest ministry. It's uh, We minister in four uh, specific areas in West Knoxville that uh, we call them pockets of poverty, and uh, we have the opportunity to minister there. And the needs really in the community ministry is what Lisa just mentioned is our mobile food pantries. That's our entry into all of the uh, areas where we serve. It's a means to an end for us. We have the opportunity to be there each week and to distribute free groceries, but it also gives us opportunities to have communication, uh, conversations with people, and uh, to, to start developing those redemptive relationships with the residents in those communities. Uh, one of the needs that we always have for the mobile food pantries is drivers. Um, mm. we, we have a mobile food pantry on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, we either need primary drivers or substitute drivers in most of those areas. Mm. And so... Uh, there's, there's always places to plug in, and, and uh, that's one of Lisa's specialties, of course. And so all you got to do is ask us, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you plugged in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, and I think, too, um, we can a lot of these opportunities could be listed directly on our website. Mm-hmm. We, have a, we have a serving opportunities page, and that would be a good place to put that as well. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Um, so... What is the best way for people to get in touch with you to volunteer or maybe to partner with you in some way, Lisa? Maybe they want to yes. financially partner with you or, or Cedar Brook and sure. pray for you. Or right, what is absolutely. the best way to, to get in touch with you? Um, yes, I would love to um, talk with you and get you um, connected to Cedar Brook, um, whether that's 
serving with us and alongside with us or um, or partnering me um, personally now that I'm in this other side <laughs> of missions and yeah. being a missionary. And so, you know, I'll be sending out some prayer letters on a personal level to people that I know um, that might be interested in joining my prayer team or support team. But, um, but also... Please contact me if I don't come and, and hunt you down first. Um, if you know who if you she are. doesn't make you eye contact exactly. with you first. You, you, my peeps out there, you know you I'm know coming. I'm coming for coming. you. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've got you on a list. I've just been waiting to be She's set She's going to let you get through the, through the, the holiday. And exactly, <laughs> exactly. But if you would contact me at lisa at cedarbrookoutreach.org, um, I would be happy, happy to um, get with you and... Um, talk to you about Cedarbrook and more of what we're doing and where your gifts and talents um, can be put to use. Um, and and would love to love to plug them in for sure. Yeah, yeah. I just want to give a little encouragement that way. Uh, Cedarbrook is a faith ministry. Yeah. It operates by faith. Uh, it does not have a, a monstrous budget, <laughs> uh, and it is it requires the the support of uh, individual brothers and sisters uh, to make it operate. And this is a mission. Mm -hmm. This is what Cedarbrook Outreach is a mission ministry. And so as people listening uh, give to Cedarbrook, they are giving to missions. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Lisa shared, she is a missionary. She is serving on mission through uh, Cedar Cedarbrook and uh, great opportunity to join her team and be a part of that. And uh, so I, I just want people to hear that, that yes, this is going out primarily to our West Park family, uh, but think beyond your regular, you know, tithe giving of opportunities to be able to give to missions and prayerfully consider right here in Jerusalem mm -hmm. yeah. because it begins in Jerusalem yeah. to the ends of the earth, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I think so many times you do hear people say, well, what about the needs around us? Yeah. Well, now we have an answer. Oh, <laughs> we have a way. <laughs> yes, um, and, and Jack has been, I mean, it, he could sit here, Lisa, also now. Uh, what is happening every week yeah. is just mind-blowing and uh, we haven't scratched the surface no. as we talk about yes. vision uh we've only just begun yeah and um you know we just have great incredible opportunities well and i think that's a good way to kind of talk about are there dreams for cedar brook that you have that as the lord brings you more volunteers more financial partners more churches, mm -hmm. things that you would love to see happen with Cedarbrook that you feel like directions the Lord might be leading you? You know, uh, Tara, in Matthew 6, Jesus gave us that model prayer, and part of that prayer, in that prayer, he said, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And our vision is what seems to be impossible, but it's very possible with Christ, and that is that the kingdom of heaven will uh, grow, will take root and grow, in all four of our communities, as well as in our STARS ministry and our furniture ministry, through our furniture ministry, that really God's kingdom will come to earth uh, through His people. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and that I, I mean uh, people living out the gospel, people living out the love of Christ. Um, but that ha that can happen, uh, but it only happens through uh, that supernatural power that uh, Christ gives us and the obedience to the Great Commission. So... Our vision is to see uh, what some people would say impossible mm. uh, to become possible and to become a reality in uh, one life at a time. Yeah, mm. that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I would, I, I ditto that for sure. Um, I would also love to see, um, you know, church partnerships grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all are going for the same goal. We yeah. want to see people come to a relationship and trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And so um, to see that and do that alongside hand to hand mm. with other partner churches um, here in our community, um, I think would be amazing. And, and then also just um, to see, you know, West Park in particular, um, 
since this is my home church, <laughs> for us to see um, our our congregation um, more out in the community mm-hmm. because. Yeah. There, like you said, Pastor, there's so much opportunity. Um, Cedarbrook has done so much, but there's so much more we yeah, can do. Right. Um, and, you know, the the biggest resource we need is people. Mm-hmm. People that love Christ and that love people enough um, to want to share the gospel with them, to keep yeah. them from um, eternal sep- separation from Christ. And so... Um, you know, we want people who love people. And yeah. to step outside their comfort zone, because yeah. that's, right. that's the hard part. That yes. is. Yes. Right. But it's very rewarding. It is. Mm-hmm. And it's not like Jack and I and the team and our volunteers um, are always comfortable, you know, mm-hmm. or right. that we're so experienced that, you know, we don't ever get uncomfortable. No, it can get right. uncomfortable at times. But at the same time, um, you know, to be able to be used by the Lord to love someone, um that's enough to get me out, to get me uncomfortable. Yeah. I want to be uncomfortable if, if the Lord can use me that way. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you've never worked in the community before, um, great, we can use you too. Yeah. Um, we can use you. Wow. And so, you know, if you're a, a lot of our um, um, opportunities are during the day. And so if you're a stay home mom or uh, you're a homeschool mom or you're a retired um or you've got flexibility within your schedule, um, you know, a lot of the things that we do is during the day and and we would love to, to have you. And then um, we're also trying to develop things that are after work um, for not only those that work, you know, that are volunteering, but for those in the community that are working. And so, um, you know, if you're interested, we will find a place for you. Yeah. 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 You know, I have, some vision about it. I, okay. I, I knew that you would. Well, I, you know, and I, I would love people. I love, there's a couple of people, a couple of groups of people that I hope are listening and will hear this. First of all, uh, all of us of a certain age, <laughs> we're wanting to pour in to those who will come behind us. And so one of the visions is to see the next generation yeah. of servant leaders that will take Cedarbrook Outreach to places that we can't imagine. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's that's one. The other one is there are many people listening to this that are of a certain age. <laughs> and I would pray they'd re- really rethink the gift of God that's given them of more time yeah. yes. after they have finished their working career to invest their time on mission right here in our community. Uh, they have more time than they've ever known. And there are children, youth, people out there, opportunities that they could invest them their time. That's, that's the other one. Uh, third one, I'll just say this. Uh, we're already, we see people coming to West Park through the outreach of, of Cedarbrook all the time, you know. Yeah. I see them every Sunday. Uh, we've the relationships have been built. Uh, see them in Awana. However, the ultimate goal I would love to see in these communities, missional outposts where there are gathered people worshiping the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Word of God's being taught. Praise is being sung to Jesus. Mm. People are being gathered intentionally, relationally, and missional communities, call them, call it church planning if you want. <laughs> I don't know exactly planning. how to yes. define that, mm-hmm. but there is a great need, not just for us to go and bring, but right. to be a part of planting missional communities in these areas around us, because that is the only way these 40,000 people Amen. around us, yeah. they, they're going to be reached through individuals and missional communities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know exactly what that's all about. Jack and I have <laughs> talked about it, prayed about it, but I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, uh, that's an incredible vision, and we pray that the, we can see the Lord bring that mm-hmm. about. Yeah. And um, so how do you see that connecting to West Park? I'm sure, I'm sure you're a man with some ideas, Pastor Sam. Well, you know... Um, Cedarbrook's not West Park, and West Park's not Cedarbrook, but we are real close. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a line, you know, of, of alignment uh, on ministry. And so 
uh, part of what Lisa is doing in her ministry is helping mobilize people from our congregation to serve locally through the mission of, of Cedarbrook Outreach. That's what Cedarbrook provides is opportunities, platforms for local churches to do mission and ministry in our community. Yeah. And so I just I see that as a, a, the big relationship. But seeing our church send more <laughs> missionaries locally, mm-hmm. yes. uh, Lisa being the, the first one maybe officially, but I think what if all what if these six or seven or eight or nine other churches had one, one missionary yeah. mm-hmm. that their oh, people support? Can you imagine? Yeah, start thinking. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, just if the churches would say, "Hey, we've got missionaries in Africa, we got missionaries in Asia, we've got missionaries. How about if we had a missionary serving locally?" Yeah. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. That, would, that would be. <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be yeah. great. That would be. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I mean this. There's, there's just so many opportunities with Cedar Brook, and just God is doing so many amazing things, and just growing this ministry. And I love that we do kind of get a front seat, front row seat to that, and to just to watch, and um, again encourage people who are listening, as Pastor Sam has. But if if you're looking for a place, or even if you're not looking, but the Holy Spirit is nudging. <laughs> Listen. Be aware, and um, there's a lot to be done in our area, not just across the world. I heard someone say years ago, if you're waiting for a call to ministry, <laughs> your phone is ringing. <laughs> there you yes. go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, did is there anything else, Jack or Lisa, that you want to share about Cedar Brook or anything you want to say before I we wrap up? I just think that um, 2024, that we are so expectant. That's kind of the word mm-hmm. that I've that keeps coming to my heart and mind as I think through this upcoming year with Cedar Brook. That I just really feel like um, this is the year that we're just going to see His kingdom come. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're we're our team is so aligned and we're so um, unified in the vision mm-hmm. of where we want to go, yeah. um, and we're already seeing God work in so many ways. Um, and we have got some great volunteers already. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you, you know, if you want to, if you want to join a, a top notch volunteer go. group, <laughs> yeah, okay, class. sorry, you know, I have to get one more plug in there, <laughs> but l- really seriously, yeah. 2024, um, I just feel like that, that there's a lot to be expected. Yeah. Yeah. That God's going to wow. do. Well, maybe we should sit down again in another year and see what happens in yeah. 2024. Maybe we don't wait a year, maybe six months. And yeah. something else I forgot to mention earlier, but it really is an important component of our ministry, are there's a number of local businesses, local mm. business people yeah. who invest mm. their hard-earned dollars and prayers in Cedarbrook as well, and uh, huge, they're a huge blessing to us and a huge help, yeah. uh, not just with our fundraising events, but just in uh, uh, shifting some of their resources in our direction uh, to help us uh, accomplish uh, God's work even while they are out uh, in the for-profit uh, marketplace yeah. uh, representing Christ. So w- there's there's some uh, incredible uh, business owners, local business owners, who uh, help us yeah. and yes. make a difference. I've seen that list of corporate sponsors. It's always impressive. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's great to, to see those partnerships. Well, it has been a joy to sit down with you all today. And I will list... Um, Ways that they can get people can get in touch with you all, and uh, a link to your website just to learn more about Cedar Brook. But I really hope that today was an encouragement to you, and that yes. is an encouragement to those listening. Yeah. Right. That the uh, Cedar Brook is um, God's doing amazing things, and they could be a part of it. Well, thanks so, for having us. Thank well, you. thanks for making time to be with me today. We'll see you all soon. Thank you for listening to Impact the World, produced by West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing, leaving a review, or sharing with a friend. 